Little Venice. Really busy trying to find somewhere to moor. Everybody's double breasted. Is that the expression? Double breasted? I think that's a jacket. Double moored. Or moored abreast. Doubled up. <laughs> first <laughs> well we're back on our way out of London now we've um, had two weeks I think uh, in maybe a little bit longer than that mm. started off on not very good footing from when we spoke to you last we went um, into well, towards Paddington Basin a little Venice to meet my son who was going to come and join us for the evening and it was fine cruising in there, but as we got to Little Venice, the moorings became more and more scarce. We missed all the Little Venice edge moorings, got into Little Venice itself and went round. There was nowhere to moor. Rain started to chuck down on us, didn't it? It was cold. It was unbelievable. The wind, suddenly this gale blew up. Well, it wasn't a gale, but well, it was a gale. Yeah, it was howling. We've taken the boat all over the place. We ended up going down to the end of the Paddington Basin and there was nowhere that we could moor. Eventually, I can't even remember where we moored up that night. Oh, right on the edge, you moored yeah, up right really of... quite dodgily. Um, just about managed to stick it in quite close to a bridge, but it was safe. Mm -hmm. Because the weather was awful and it was getting dark. And that night we did think, we're not going to do this. We're not going to go through London. If this is what it's like, um, the weed hatch had been getting blocked up, hadn't it? Oh, I had my hand down the weed hatch three times in 24 hours. Um, but fortunately, now we've come back. It hasn't been a problem, has it? We're no. okay. But we've just got so jammed up. This is um, just the collection from two visits to the weed hatch. This, we've been through. Been, I've been down in the weed hatch now in the last four or five days, four times. And this is the collection from just the last two times I've been down in the weed hatch. Look at this. It's a bit of a misnomer, isn't it, calling it a weed hatch? <laughs> There's no weed in there, is there? London's rubbish hatch. Look at that. Look at that. That was wrapped around the propeller. And that is the line, inner lining of a tent. So, it's, I'm glad you've done that. It's a rotten day out there. We need to move on because um, we couldn't moor up very well last night. We're about two feet away from the bank. It's not good for the dogs, isn't it? No. So, but we don't want to be poodling along at two miles an hour. I'd like to get at least four <laughs> today. So, another good job done. We've poured... Um, Cheers, London. Poured hot water into the hatch first to try and warm the water up. It just doesn't do anything, no. does it? it just no, doesn't. it's... Uh... Absolutely freezing it's cold, the cold water. Cold hands. And, uh, <laughs> but, Rawr. Rawr. Um, but we've been dead lucky with moorings. Uh, we found this little spot in Hackney. Uh, we, so we spent three nights in Hackney uh, waiting for them to finish repairing the locks that were just ahead of us. Um, and we got on this mooring just by the bridge and we managed to put the front line on and the centre line and uh, everybody sort of kind of moves at the weekend. I think they jostle for positions and then because they have to work Monday to Friday so they move at the weekend. So coming back it was so busy wasn't it? Yeah. But uh, we're chugging through the same place coming back and I thought oh, I'm never going to get a place, never going to play. And lo and behold that very same spot was still available wasn't we are it? We a bit chummy aren't we? Nobody had, nobody had taken it because it's right on the edge of a bridge. And uh, it doesn't obstruct anybody anywhere, but uh, I guess they thought they couldn't get in there. So, so we haven't had to double more at all. We had one boat more onto us for about an hour because yeah. they were doing some work, but we've been really lucky. So mooring has been no problem really. We obviously decided that we would carry on after the episode at Paddington Base. We did carry on, and the next night we'd booked mooring spot at um, the Canal Boat Museum at King's Cross. Battles Bridge Basin wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and that was that's really smashing. lovely. Yeah, it really was good. anybody that's coming to London I think definitely do that. 
Um, because the museum was closed on the Monday, we were actually able just to leave our boat on a gated mooring. So we could go and have a, a wander around Camden Town and treat ourselves to a lunch. Um, and could leave the dogs on the boat for a couple of hours knowing that they were safe. So if you're coming to London on your boat, I, I absolutely recommend that for £10 a night for mooring. That was brilliant, wasn't it? Uh, superb. Uh, and it was quiet, secluded. The boat was locked it behind gates. And uh, you felt you could just leave it there without worrying, so, which we did. <laughs> we yeah. went exploring with the dogs as well. And from then on, what was after that? That was Regent's Park. We're being filmed by people in the zoo. I think they think we're one of the exhibits. We're some of those rare orangutans. We're going, <laughs> going past the bird enclosure at uh, Regent's London Zoo, Regent's Park Zoo, whichever, whatever it's called. Oh look. What's that? It's a bird enclosure. If there's anything more wrong then it's caging birds, isn't it? If anything could, if anything, that shouldn't be caged, it's a bird. Like a bird. You wouldn't see me in a zoo. <laughs> Maybe in the gorilla <laughs> enclosure. <laughs> look at those poor buggers up there, look. got a round of applause through Camden Lock. Uh, we we're hoping to get the same on the way back but there was there was only about three tourists on a wet Monday coming back. <laughs>
people have asked us, do you feel safe in London? And yeah, you have to, some places you have to be mindful about where you're going to moor the boat. You've actually not let me go out and walk the dogs on my own at night. No. Quite often I take them out for a last last little walk yeah. about nine o'clock and Rich wouldn't let me do that because he just felt that it wasn't safe for me to do. But there's been no problem, has there? No, you get the odd youth shouting and the, the, the continual noise and the sirens. It gets me down, to be honest. I've now had enough. And we're not life. sleeping because no. I think for a few reasons. First of all, you you don't completely relax because there's stuff going on all around you. There is background noise all the time, as you say, sirens, and the light. We're just now not used to there being any light outside the boat at night, and we've had continual light. <laughs> you wake up in the night, you know, and you you don't know whether it's seven in the morning or one in the morning because it's just the same light all the time and. Uh, so I've been getting up mega early, haven't I? I nearly said super early then. I've been getting up really early, Which is haven't really I? good because you make the coffee and light the fire <laughs> and... <laughs> what do you do, Fran? Well, I'm learning how to cook on the stove. With, um, I get a great pleasure out of just using what energy we've got on the go. So, I'm just sorry, wasting heat. Vegetable casserole on the top. And it's just whatever vegetables we had going in a tomato and herb sauce. And there's been a, quite a big discussion on Facebook recently about the way to do and not to do potatoes. As many people as you ask, you'll get a different answer about how to do jacket potatoes on a fire. I think the technique is really to put them in the ash pan. But we've realised that our ash pan is too small. And unless you've got little potatoes, they don't fit. So I did them the other day and they were perfect, so I've got them double wrapped in foil, um, pricked the skins first, rubbed them with salt and oil, and when we cooked them the other day we just literally left them in the side of the fire, like that, not right on the hot embers, turned them a couple of times, and I've got to say they were fantastic, weren't they? They were really crispy skins and they had a lovely flavour, so it's just about not wasting you've got a fantastic resource here producing all this heat so why bother to put the cooker on it's quite stressful as well london isn't it it's not just oh, the, yeah. the noise and the hustle and the bustle it's wondering if you're going to get a mooring spot and if you can't and then you're going to have to moor up against alongside somebody and how accessible is that going to be for the dogs on and off the and, dogs have not been happy know, the dogs have been, been happy, really yeah. oh, i can't say really stressed but they've not Obviously we can't let them off the lead, they don't like the traffic when you're walking along the roads, they, all the time, they've really not been happy. So Every day we've been going to a park, haven't we, just to let them off the lead. Yeah. And, uh, what was that park we went to yesterday? Haggerston. Haggerston, Haggerston park, park in beautiful. Hackney. Lovely little park, yeah, beautiful gardens. And while we're moored up now, right in the middle of a, an estate, and there's a sort of a community garden that's been built for people that obviously don't have gardens of their own. There was a guy sleeping in the polytunnel last night that had obviously had a little bit of something and he was shouting out that he was Jimmy. God. He thought he was God living in the polytunnel. <laughs> shouting, I am God, I am God. <laughs> so God is alive and well and living in a polytunnel <laughs> just outside Hackney. <laughs> but I think we're going to get back down to living again properly now. And so we're going to try and incorporate a little bit into our future vlogs of, of what life is like living in this little tiny space you know regards I'm not going to start doing recipes but cooking and and the stove and how we're adapting to life in a, a small space so nothing else is going to change on the vlogs we've entered all our journeys and our scenery yeah, yeah. hopefully you can get the drone going again once we're out of london because oh, the drone restrictions and where you can and can't fly you look at uh you can download an app that allows you to see you know restrictions and where you can safely fly your drone and I just haven't bothered in London because it's just got red everywhere saying don't bother more or less. Well here goes, I um, may have stoked the fire up a bit too brightly, I'll actually go away. <laughs> so, I don't know if this is going to be a bit burnt or what but we'll see. This is an, about an hour later, we've checked them a couple of times and we'll see. So this is my dinner tonight then. Well don't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not 
You know, oh, I think they smell a bit burnt. <laughs> Good, oh, huh? Alright, don't mind, they look good. Well that one's a bit burnt, but that's okay. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a bit of black oh. skin on a potato. That just needs a little. Well oh, maybe it's not gonna squidge. <laughs> They're good. Look at that, that's a lovely potato. Look. Yeah? Impressed. So, double wrapped in foil, oil and salt, and just on the edge of the flames. If you can fit them in the ashtray underneath, that's supposed to be better, but our ashtray is only about that deep, so these wouldn't fit. But cooked for nothing. Who wants dinner? What did you just say? I said, you know what you've got when you get back from your walk, don't you? A little treat for you. Yeah. Coffee and donuts. Coffee and donuts. <laughs> Have we finished our walk now? Can we go back? No, another <laughs> half an hour yet. Oh, there's just a little bit of colour left in the trees now. But the way the weather's going, the nights are getting colder. It's not going to be long before it's completely bare. <laughs> Thank you for watching us and the dogs. Thanks for subscribing. We are that close to 3,000 subscribers. Can't believe that. <laughs> I remember uh, months and months ago when we said thanks to everybody for subscribing because we got 200 subscribers and we were gobsmacked. But uh, yeah, 3,000 nearly subscribers and uh, it's, uh, the comments we get are just fantastic. Here we are, Islington, just come through the Islington Tunnel. Quite a nice little set in this. Just a lock ahead of us. A nice little garden here by the side of the bridge. And oh, what's Fran doing? What are you doing, Fran? She's taking cutting, she's nicking plants. <laughs> <laughs>